living in a changing world, with their changing people, with their changing times, with a constantly changing culture, presenting the indescribable and changeable Christ, where the supernatural is natural and nothing is impossible if you believe, and where thoughts become things. Now, here's Conrad Santa. Tonight on Glory TV, presenting the fundamental criterion for creating the right atmosphere for the manifestation of the presence of God and the manifestation of the Holy Spirit. Now, there's certain things that we can do in our own lives that we need to work on to let the Holy Spirit or the presence of God to be so manifest. Now, I want us to start by looking at the book of Psalm, the uh, Psalm 139th chapter and the 7th verse to the 12th verse. There, the word of God says, Where can I go from the Spirit of the Lord? Or where can I flee from the presence of God? If I ascend up into the heavens, He's there. If I make my bed in Sheol, He's there. If I take on the wings of dawn, He's there. If I dwell in the remotest parts of the sea, He's there. Simply put, ladies and gentlemen, is that the presence of God is encompassing the whole universe across the whole board, you know, from the uh, planet Earth to the nearest galaxy Andromeda, which is about 2,537 2, 2, million light years away, is there. And also to the furthest galaxy that is known to astronomers, which is 13.5 billion light years. If you go there, is there, is that far, is there, is there, and is here, is everywhere as I'm talking to you right now. His presence is encompassing, he's an omnipotent God that I'm talking about here. Right now, as I'm here in Glory TV studio, is in Tasmanian Island, is in Mongolia, is in Tokyo, Japan, is in Bangkok, Thailand, is in New Delhi, India, is in Lusaka, Zambia, is in Oslo, Norway, is in Peru, Lima, and is in Connecticut, USA, is in Papua New Guinea, is in Paris, France, is in Baffin Islands, Canada, is in the Pacific Ocean in Tristan Tacuna, at the same time as I'm talking right now, is in all these places and is here at the same time. What a God. So his presence then is everywhere, is encompassing at the same time as I'm talking. But the problem is then, even though the presence of God is everywhere at the same time right now, but how come then, how come we don't experience his presence everywhere? even though his presence is here. I mean, this is a pragmatic question that I'm asking you. Why is it that we don't experience the manifestation of the presence of God everywhere, even though he's everywhere at the same time? Well, there's two kinds of presences of God, I might say. There's the manifest presence of God where he manifests himself, and there's also a presence that God is present, but yet his presence is not maybe uh, perceptible, perceivable to man now, or to the senses of human, but God is there even right now as I'm talking. Every way, every day, wherever you go, God is everywhere at the same time. But yet not many perceive that. That's why people can go on sinning. They think nobody's looking, but God is there, right? So there's that presence of God which is encompassing and then there's a manifest presence of God. Now the manifest presence of God comes as a result when you love the Lord and when you obey His commands, when you honor Him, when you praise Him, His Spirit comes down. When you praise Him in truth and in spirit, then He manifests Himself. And we can see that from the book of John, the book of John, the 14th chapter, the 21st verse. There the word of God is said, He that hath my commandments and keep them. Now notice what the word of God says. He that have the commandments, you 
the commandments of the Lord and keep them, he, it is he that loveth me. So if you have the commandments of the Lord and keep them, there are people today, believers who keep, who have the commandments of the Lord. They have the word of God, but they don't keep the word of God. But here Jesus was saying, he who has my commandments and keeps them, is the one who loves me. So if you love the Lord, you say you love the Lord, just don't talk the talk without walking the talk. If you say you love the Lord, you got to demonstrate it by obeying, by keeping the commands of the Lord. And Jesus says, if you love me, then you keep my commandments. And if you go on in the same chapter there, chapter 14, the 21st verse there, it says, uh, because you love me, excuse me, because you love me, the Father, okay, the Father and I will love you too. And the Father and I, Jesus saying, will come and manifest myself to you. What does that mean for God to manifest himself to you? If you love the Lord with all your heart, you fear him, you obey him, he will come and manifest himself to you. What does that mean? Well, the Greek word for manifest there. The, the word manifest there that is being used in the book of John there is the word uh, for narrow. Now what the word for narrow means, it means to make visible. So if you love God, you keep his commandments, you want to experience his presence. The first thing that's going to happen there, because you love him, you keep his commands, you live according to his statutes, you are following what is stipulated in the word of God that you should live by. You're not living by yourself, you're living by what the word of God says. There the word of God says, you come and manifest. He and the Father, of course the Holy Spirit, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, will manifest themselves or himself to you because it's one in three person there. Now, the word manifest is a word for narrow, which means to make visible, to cause something to be fully known by revealing, meaning revelation. Now, what revelation means, it means something that is covered will be uncovered. It has always been there, but it's covered and you don't see it, but it will be uncovered. So God will uncover himself to you. You start to get to know who really God is in fully you understand who God is. Why? Because you're following his statute. You're obeying him. So he'll make himself known by revelation. So there he'll make himself known to you fully by revealing himself also by his word and deeds. That means there'll be God showing himself, the manifestation of the presence of God that you've never seen before. It's going to start taking place in you. Why? Because God will show himself. In other words, uh, it's the word uh, epanizo, meaning to show forth. So God will show forth himself to manifest, to exhibit, to view, to show oneself, to come to view, to appear, to manifest, to indicate or disclose, to declare to make himself known because you love him with all your heart and you follow him therefore he will show us himself great to you in the book of psalm the 22nd chapter the third verse there the word of god says but thou O lord okay but thou O lord you are holy O thou who inhabits the praises of his people i love this people of god look when you praise when you worship god when you surrender yourself to God, when you begin to sing praises to God, you lift up your hands in humble adoration, you magnify the name of the Lord. For example, if you're going, Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. begins to happen is that the presence of God, remember the Bible says he inhabits, the verse I just gave you there, he inhabits the praises of Israel. So when you're worshiping him, you're building a throne. And when you build a throne, 
The word of God says heaven is his throne and the earth is his footstool. So he comes down and he sits in the midst of his people. That means his presence comes down. If there is sickness, sickness begins to get healed just like that. If there's people that are possessed with devils, malevolent spirits, spirits of darkness, these familiar spirits, they just get out like that. Why? Because the presence of God become manifest. How does it manifest? When we praise, when we worship him in spirit and in truth. This is not just about being having good songs that we really like. This is, it means the heart. It's the matter of heart. As you dedicate yourself to God, he begins to manifest his, his, his presence. And you know what? Devils will shudder in the presence of God. Sickness flees in the presence of God. If you have psychoneurosis and lung infection, brain tumor, high stress, myopia, leukemia, meningitis or uh, appetitis or maybe a heart murmur or uh, any kind of sickness, AIDS, or you have maybe brain tumor, whatever, or blood pressure, or sugar diabetes, or maybe rheumatoid arthritis, or maybe whatever situation that is, that's going to just dissipate in the presence of God. When you allow the presence to come down, it becomes so powerful, and the manifestation of the presence of God begins to take place, and therefore sickness cannot stay, devil's goal and the day that are, are, are brought back to life and miracles begin to take place. Why? Because you have tapped in to the presence of God. You've created an atmosphere that is so conducive for the Holy Spirit to come and dwell. Now remember, the Holy Spirit always, always announces His coming, never His departure. He never announces his departure. He comes with power. If you look at the book of Judges, the 16th chapter, the 20th verse there, when Samson, the spirit of God would come upon Samson, Samson became so familiar and he thought that, you know, I'll do it as at other time. He cut off the symbol of his covenant with the Lord. He cut off the locks of the hair. And then Delilah said, Samson, the Philistines are on you. He thought he was going to do the same like he used to do before. But you know what? He wished that the Spirit of the Lord had departed. Why? Because he became so familiar with the things of God. Please don't become too familiar with the things of God. Don't. Don't. Just follow the Holy Spirit. Live in his word and obey him every day. And you shall see the goodness of God in the land of the living. If you look at the book of Judges, there the Philistines, you know, that came upon him. And Samson walked, he thought he would do it as at other times, but oh boy, the Spirit of the Lord had already departed from him. Why? Because of what he did. And in the book of Numbers, if you look at 1 Samuel, the 16th chapter, the 14th verse, the Spirit of the Lord departed from Saul because of disobedience and doubling into the forbidden territories. And you know what? When the Spirit of the Lord departed from him, maybe Saul was still thinking he's operating under the Spirit of God. This is how many people are today. They think they're operating under the Spirit of God because they're doubling into forbidden territories and all they have is familiar spirits that are operating in them. So be very careful. If you are doubling into forbidden territories, you're stepping in dangerous ground. You better turn around and come back and walk in the right direction and you shall see the manifestation of God like never before. Saul was loved by God. God had chosen Saul, but chose, Saul chose to disobey God. The rebellious dwell in the dry land. Don't rebel against God. Follow God in total obedience, not partial obedience, not obeying God because it's convenient to you. You obey God because the word of God says so. If you look at the Deuteronomy chapter 28, Verse 1, the word of God says, If you shall surely obey the Lord your God, it shall surely come to pass, and there's all blessings that come. If you go to the 15th verse there, there's curses that come as a result of disobedience to God. Now remember, you want to see the manifested presence of God? Honor the Lord with all your heart. Live according to His values. Worship them in truth and in spirit. Let your life be governed by the Word of God. And you will see the manifested presence of God like never before. And worship Him in truth and in spirit. Not the way you want, the way He wants. He's the one dictating. 
which way you should go. Ask God, what do you want to do today, Lord? Which way do you want to go? And then he will direct you. Then you go according to that way. All right. May God bless you. Thank you so much for listening today. And thank you for being with me here today on Glory TV. May God bless you. And you stay blessed. We'll see you next time right here. God bless you. Shalom.